uh, yeah i feel comfortable with the training so i can look in different stuff different i now i grew into commentary mm. i started coming i was gonna bring that up yeah let me do the job all right, no, all right. take it over from me so you start getting into the commentating <laughs> how that goes no seriously though like i really think that if we were in a ring together you'd be terrified bro right <laughs> is that your look of terror? <laughs> yes, I'm scared. Like, so how would you I'm defend? Scared. How would you defend against me in a ring? Well, I'll slam you, pick you up, spark you on your head. Bro, what are you talking about? Before we do that, bro, I'll have you wrapped up in a kimura and a pretzel. You know what a pretzel is? A pretzel is something that I invented, bro. How about punch your head to the canvas till you can't move? Bro, what's the canvas? <laughs> <laughs> it's the floor of the cage. No, no, you wouldn't, you wouldn't get a chance, bro. Have you seen? Do you see that Mazda valve? Knee, eh, that that knee, that uh, as you are running in, like with your head down, like that. <laughs> How about meeting your face with a punch while you're running so fast towards me? It's quite polite, you know. What I'd do is first I'd hook you in your in your rib, yeah, and then even your rib would go ah like that. Yeah, the sound <laughs> that comes out from the side. And then we'll How do that. about <laughs> kicking your head so damn hard, so I'm like, do you think you can reach my head? I'm a pretty tall dude, bro. I'm like 5'11". No problem. Five, pick, you five, up, pick you up, slam you, elbow you. Do you really think you could? I'm pretty, I'm pretty, like, uh, pretty aggressive, bro. I'm pretty, pretty fast on my feet, bro. And I can get... You see that movement? You know, like that? Bro, man, just start the interview, bro. What's going on? <laughs> You're so aggressive and stuff. Yeah. Guys, welcome yeah. to another episode. <laughs> Today, I have the light heavyweight champion of UAE Warriors with me, Tarek Slayman. How you doing, bro? <laughs> good, it's yeah. Good, it's good to have you in here. Like, I didn't think that you were going to attack me, but good, to be honest, yeah. it was a, it's a good start. It's relax. A good start. Why I'm trying to fix my mic, bro. Relax, relax. Don't be nervous. I'm not nut, bro. I won't, I won't. I'm a beast, bro. I won't touch you. I'm relax, a beast. Relax. I will, I will turn beast mode on now, bro, and then it will be over, bro. Relax. I, I won't break anything. I'm trying I to fix my mic because something's happening with this mic. I think it's... And, uh, even the mic is pretty, nervous. Pretty, pretty scared of them. Yeah, they're nervous. Yeah, You're just coming off a, a nice win there. <laughs> yes. How's it going? Good, I mean, good, not the win good. between our imaginary fight because yeah. that's, that's to be continued. That's <laughs> oh, not finished that's yet. an imaginary one, yeah? Huh? Well, yeah, bro. If you want to continue to fight for the rest of the thing, yeah. how did it feel coming on the next win? Good, good. I love it. Um, the, the two solid wins back to back, uh, putting me in a really good spot in the region. So, yeah, I'm yeah. really happy with it. Yeah, being like now, now I can really plan for the future. So, yeah, good, yeah. And you have your your lovely belt with you here. Exactly. There's one thing, you know, you learn something new every day. I didn't know until you told me that every time you win, they give you another belt. Yeah, so like every time, so when I, when you become a champion, they give you a championship but belt. When you become a champion, <laughs> it's like, like talk, let me just talk to the peasant. When you, beco- I mean, when you become a champion, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So when you become a champion, yeah. it, it, similar to, I think, football, when you win a championship, yeah. they give you a trophy every time you win, right? They give you a medal, the club gets a trophy. Oh, okay. So yeah. every time the, the uh, you win a championship, the, the club wins a new trophy, yeah, right? Yeah. So it's similar to this. Every time I win a championship, I get a, a belt. Every time I defend the belt, I get a new belt. So, so far you have two belts. So No, only one. Why? Because you won it and defended it. No, so I won that at light heavyweight. Okay. And then I decided to move down to middleweight. Okay. To fight for the new one. So they didn't give me the like an easy pass to yeah, a championship yeah, to in, in yeah, middleweight. Yeah. So they told me to win a couple wins in middleweight. Then they will give then me. Then you go to the Yeah, so the, my last two wins were in middleweight. And now we're set to fight for a middleweight title. And what, why did you go down? Because it's more natural for me. So that, like I started off as middleweight. Like so, I fought over three different weight classes. Mm. I started off as a middleweight in, in the first ever MMA fight I've ever did. Then a few fights in, I moved down to welterweight, which is seventy-seven wow. kilos. I did a uh, few of those. However, I missed weights a couple times. So yeah. like the cut was so big for me, uh, I wasn't comfortable with weight cutting. I was not doing it scientifically. Uh, I did. I think five fights. I missed weight two times. Yeah. Uh, then it was too hard for my body, so I decided to move back to middleweight. I fought a couple times at middleweight, and then the opportunity uh, opportunity came uh, knocking 
for the title fight and i accepted it at 93 kilos so this is two weight yeah. classes above the welterweight, weight and uh it was against a very big name a very well known a ufc veteran bellator veteran uk strongest man mm. uh ollie thompson mm -hmm. and it was a. Uh, I was a big, big underdog in that fight. And basically, I, like in the eyes of many, I came to lose. So yeah. I was just filling up a spot. Which is good for you. I took, uh, I took a lot of pressure off my shoulders. However, it was, this fight was a turning point for me. I was like going into it, knowing that if I lose this fight, like my MMA career mm -hmm. won't be the same. I may, I may change or I may divert into different things. However, like, like, like what? yeah, photography. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna do a kid's birthday party. He's yeah. just shredded. He's like, get your baby to move to the left. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. or maybe jujitsu competition. Yeah. I, I'd, I'd, uh, I'd done uh, one cool one in Japan, where it was pure grappling, where I snap your elbows and knees. Mm. Nice. Yeah. What, what do you favor, Brazilian jujitsu or Japanese jujitsu? Because or the origins comes from Japan. Japan, no? yeah, yeah, true. But I favor what I do, Brazilian yeah. Jiu-Jitsu. And you got your black belt in uh, Brazilian, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Jiu yeah. From which school? Uh, under Atos. Okay. If you know them. No. No. Actually, is. yes, they have a triangle shape uh, logo, right? Tri triangle or diamond? Uh, no, writings. Writings? Yeah. Turns out I don't know them. So I actually I trained over a few schools. Mm. So like I'm not specifically uh, like be, like under one school. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, being in Thailand, being in Tiger Muay Thai, I had a uh, few coaches uh, like coming and going. So I took a bit of style from mm -hmm. everyone. Uh, and when I become a black belt. My friend in Jordan, his name is Ashraf Shishani, he's like, uh, we were talking and I, I was telling him, I was a brown belt then and I was telling him, I think I'm expecting to be a black belt soon. Uh, I have this, this in mind. And later on, he started talking to the coaches in Tiger Muay Thai and discussing the idea behind my back. Mm. And I remember I was in Lebanon in AUB in my university and i was just dropping by saying hello to my old uh, doctors and uh, i the, i receive a video i was like i will open it back in at home mm -hmm. then uh, i check it out at home and it was him promoting me over like social media and uh actually i didn't get my black belt till i traveled back to thailand and then the coach there Stuart cooper is one of the legends in uh, jiu-jitsu mm -hmm. he presented it to me wow yeah. Did you go through the uh, what's it called when you got your no when you're black belt yeah. you don't you do don't do it, it right yeah. this is respect like, enough of <laughs> this stuff I've been through like no, no, okay no. so for for so for the people who don't know when you get your belt you go through a gauntlet yes. so where there's your your uh, not teammates uh, your community of, of of your class standing on either side of you and you're running through and they have a folded belt. And they're lashing you. So actually, what we yeah. do, we invite more schools, so we have the, <laughs> more people. So that corridor of yeah, yeah. like whipping people yeah. will be more. Yeah. So I like uh, I just promoted a friend of mine is Abdullah Bushiri. Uh, I, I invited at least at least thirty five people. Wow. So like, and he got lashed on the back. Wow. Oh my! Like, he you, so you run through, and you're just getting lashed. How many times? Does it depend on the belt? How many times? It depends you go through? on the belt. So yeah. like for him, I promoted him to purple belt. He did uh, three, three goes three and back, so six. Yeah, and one very fast yeah. eight for the for being late. Yeah. To be honest, um, for what you go through to get your belts, it's not that. I mean, seeing it from the yeah. outside, it looks like a, a bad thing. I but got, for I what got, you go I through, it's, show it's you not bad. His back. You got a picture of his back? Yes. You oh, got he got a picture of his back. <laughs> you, so got this to, you got to send this to me, and yeah. I'm going to put this up on the screen. Yeah, not ideal. <laughs> <laughs> not ideal. They drew blood. Yes, exactly. But worth it in the end, right? <laughs> I, so yeah. one thing I didn't know, I thought Tiger Muay Thai was uh, just Muay Thai. I didn't realize that. There, has it been a long time since they started incorporating so, Jiu-Jitsu in there and that kind of stuff? It's the biggest martial arts uh, uh, schools in the world mm. so the name is Tiger Muay Thai mm. just the name it just it doesn't mean what they have inside uh, of course being in Thailand Muay Thai is the national sport of Thailand mm. 
they had to name it Muay Thai. Uh, and uh, to be registered as school in the government uh, or martial arts school in the government, you have to have Muay Thai and in Thailand. Name. Yeah. So, yeah, we have the biggest grappling uh, program in uh, Southeast Asia. Wow. Yeah. And like the wrestling is top notch. We had one of the best uh, coaches there, uh, Roger Huerta. We had uh, like elite division one wrestling, Frank Hickman and George Hickman, all this, mm. all this grappling. We had a uh, few schools. We had Atos Jiu Jitsu. We had uh, I know, uh, Atos, the, the logo's writing, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Allah, you're smart, Some people smart. mistake it for a triangle or a diamond, but <laughs> those are the guys with no kind of education on, on martial, mixed martial arts, you know? You're smart. Yeah. 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 You know you stick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we had Hands of Gracie. We had a few Hanzo. few few uh, schools passing by Tage Muay Thai, so like um, the, the the general I the general atmosphere is martial arts mm. and the fitness program is really big so what took you from because you you started off as a boxer yes so what made you think okay from, you did your homework so yeah, what made you I think know. from uh, let, let me go from boxing to to, to um, bjj so funny enough i started as swimmer okay so like when i was a kid i was One doing second. i'm just going to talk to my edit uh, to my producer cut that bit out we're going to start that so before you were boxing bro you started <laughs> off as a swimmer right like not a lot of people know that oh, wow. <laughs> Now I know where you get your information. <laughs> <laughs> you wait for me to say it. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. So you were a swimmer? Yeah, so I started off swimming and uh, I, was, I came from a small sea. There's uh, no uh, indoor pools and anything like that. So like in the winter, I was without competition or without training. Mm. So my friends start introducing me into boxing and it's like, come try it out. Just stay fit. Because I was getting fat in the in the winter and mm. like a beer. Yeah, yeah. Like hibernate in the winter yeah, yeah. and, <laughs> and train in the summer. Yeah. yeah, but like then they introduced me into boxing in 2003. Yeah. And uh, yeah, start like start loving the sports. I love the competition, like mm. m mainly. And like uh, boxing is really a hardcore uh, sport. So yeah, and then uh, I did it for a few years. Uh, then I moved for to Lebanon for uh, university, and also I was so fat. Mm. I was, so, you know, moving to Lebanon, McDonald's, mm. Burger King, I was like this and Convenience, that. Convenience, yeah. Yeah, so I got so fat, and then uh, one day I woke up. Uh, I said, like, I'm gonna change my life. I'm gonna become fit mm. and stuff. Uh, yeah, so I got a membership in a gym. I remember it called Blaze. Yeah, and uh, yeah, from then I start doing sport, being uh, like really healthy, bodybuilding, yeah. muscle, abs. Yeah. And then I saw a class while I was walking, doing gym. I saw a kickboxing class, mm -hmm. a, a Sanshu boxing. And I was like, I'll try it. Then I try it for uh, like a, a session and the coach says, oh, wow, you have a good hand, but you don't know how to kick. Mm -hmm. How about you You start kicking a little bit? I was like, okay. So I start learning, got my like ass handed yeah. to me a couple times, but I'm competitive. I can't. I was like, if you yeah, kick yeah. my ass, I'm going to yeah. come again. And yeah. I will keep coming till I beat you. So I kept coming, kept coming till I got better in it. And then the coach said, how about there is a competition uh, right around the corner? Would you like to join? I was like, yeah, why not? Yeah. Let's try it. And yeah, and they got hooked. In 2011, the yeah, I started in May, and that's in Lebanon. You started, yes, the, okay, in Lebanon. <coughs> Pardon me, it's just my manliness just coming out. So, <laughs> so what made you think to go to Thailand? Where did Thailand come into it? Uh, Thailand. So I finished my university. Mm. And uh, due to the war in Syria, uh, there was no way back for me there. And uh, like uh, the word Syrian was like everyone like was like taking mm -hmm. his stance it's like, oh, I, they can't work. So I couldn't find work in Lebanon and uh, uh, things getting really expensive in Lebanon. Living in Lebanon in general is really expensive. And mm -hmm. back then in the war and the uh, economy in syria was crashing and my like my parents were not making money anytime uh, like nothing uh like basically my father 
send me a message like hey you're on your own mm -hmm. uh like don't come back it's a very bad situation yeah. and if i went back i would have been taken to uh the military yeah. because there's a military service there so uh they told me that basically you're on your own mm -hmm. and then i was choosing on the internet uh for martial arts schools because i like that mm -hmm. like a way of living and i was making money out of it a bit of money and uh, i was like it, i had the choice between canada and thailand mm -hmm. And then Thailand was the, the cheapest heat, obviously the heat and the beach. Yeah, yeah. and the, like, no, I didn't think about the weather. Yeah. I just thought thought about money. Yeah, yeah, money. Okay. Thailand was the cheapest option where I can stay longer mm. uh, without like worrying about financials. Mm. Yeah, you can live for a long time in Thailand with a small amount of money. Yeah, however, yeah. finance finance became an issue yeah. later on in oh, Thailand. Because you can also <laughs> once you run out of that money, you can't yeah. make good money exactly. there as well. Exactly. Now, yeah, a lot of people um, were affected from the whole, you know, war in Syria and stuff. I have got two friends, um, two deaf brothers. Uh, you might even know them, uh, Faraz and Wa'al. So they started a school for deaf children in, in Syria nice. um, because they're really big on the whole. Because, you know, in the Middle East, it's they kind of with disabilities, they try and hide it. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. So they, they, you know, did a worldwide thing, got sponsors and everything, built the school. And then they were just like, mm, it's gone. <laughs> the school was gone. It was taken. Oh. You know, the lands was bombed, their, their brothers sure. and all that stuff. And it was just like, it's really disheartening sure, to see. Yeah, I know. So it's it's it was big for me uh like the war and and all these things i lost a lot of people like in my life due mm. to, to this war and all this conflict in the region um and uh, being involved in it in a way or or not like just being syrian it was like mm. you're in it mm. if whether you want it or not uh it was a big motivation for me in my fights and uh to represent the word syrian and just mm. uh uh to stand up and say to the world like hey we're not just the, the bad people mm. you see on tv we are actually re really good people sometimes mm. and uh, uh <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> we're actually really good people sometimes, sometimes if you can find one out of ten but still still one <laughs> there <laughs> is yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. yeah. yeah everywhere in the world you'll exactly find that stuff. yeah yeah exactly so like that was one of the missions that i wanted to do really and uh Every time I got into uh, like when I won't go to fights, I make sure I win so I mm. can say a yeah. couple of words is like, hey, listen, mm. people, we're not what you see on TV. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're not bad people. I mean, I did just smash his brains in yes. on the floor. He is picking his brains up off the off the canvas, but in a good way. <laughs> in a good yeah, way. Yeah. And are you not entertained? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Yeah. No, no, yeah. And okay, so your first fight. First when, I mean, first professional fight. First prof yeah, I was now, in Jordan. Yeah. Now, when you're in when you're in the change room, what are you thinking? Oh my god, I don't know. If you want Honestly. me to do you remind me to talk in general what I'm thinking or in the first fight? In well, the I'm first thinking. fight, we'll get to the general, but that first fight because it's 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 the one that changes. Actually, you, right? it, was, uh, it was the easiest one because mm. I didn't know what to expect. Yeah, I don't know where I'm getting myself into. Okay, I was like. Yeah, I'm going to fight. Yeah. So what? So like, I was a bit nervous, of course, but uh, I wasn't like I didn't know the meaning of losing. Then yeah. I didn't know the meaning of competition or what I'm heading. Like, I didn't have a clear vision. I was young, uh, like I was on this like wave. I was like, ah, I got this shit, yeah. you know. So I didn't expect. I didn't know. Only when you lose. Hmm. is when you're you, like, yeah. like you have this it becomes real the, the, <laughs> yes yeah. yeah so what's your favorite memory from inside the Ins cage inside the cage or the ring favorite memory is winning the belt yeah how did that feel oh i mean so God. before let's go back let's go back to the changing room yeah. you're fighting for the belt what's going through your mind there uh and that fight like in specific i was like do or die yeah um like um not scared i'm nervous but good nervous yeah. i'm focused i'm not angry i'm just hungry mm. 
and uh really just in my in my head i'm gonna die for this i'm gonna die for this i was standing and waiting you can talk to my face and i won't recognize you yeah. i was in a different different just dimension zoned out. yeah i tell you i now my friends is like uh tell me he's like i was yelling to you i you looked at me as like i don't remember yeah, yeah, i don't remember anything. just tunnel vision right just going i through. just literally didn't see anything beside like killing the guy in front of me and that happens all the way to the ring all the way till i finished till you finished yeah okay so mike tyson once said that you can see someone you can see the win in someone's eyes when you meet up with them in the yes. ring you can tell if he's lost already i did I, you have that look in his eyes did he yes i tell you i remember uh they bro we were in both in the cage each one in the in the corner and they're calling uh our names and introducing us and then the referee in the middle bring us in to yeah. touch gloves before the fight yeah? yeah and then that he did so and i looked in his eyes and then he bow his uh, head i was like i got like, this <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. i got him yeah. so I, I i i see already he's taking a step back i was like I'm gonna kill him, yeah. and that I literally, I went all out, yeah. like from the get go, picked him up, slammed yeah. him two times first round. He was way heavy in me. Yeah. He was dropping from 120 kilos to 93. So wow. imagine how big yeah. he was. Uh, he his natural weight is 120. So he must have also felt that because his punch at 120 compared to 90 kilos would have been a lot weaker than it would have been well, like, so he was probably like why, why is it not yeah. working bro <laughs> this uh, usually is really he, good he caught me a couple of times yeah, yeah. but yeah and uh grappling with him was the hardest part he yeah. was really strong and uh like it was the toughest fight physically because after i won the fight so the fight took two rounds after i won them i couldn't breathe after i mm. was like so exhausted I walked back to my corner. I was looked at my corner and I just collapsed on the floor. Oh, yeah. And they were like trying to pick me up. It was like, yeah. show them that you're not tired. Yeah. Like, you're like, too I late. got the belt. Khalas, man. What do you yeah. want from me, man? <laughs> too late. Bring it too, I'm so tired. Yeah. Too late. Tell them I'm tired. Yeah. I don't care what they think. Yeah. yeah but I was exhausted. Yeah. And when did you feel that victory? Was it in the changing room after? Or was it in the ring? Or was it the next, the day, next day? Actually, yeah. yeah I, uh, my family sent me a video from my own city wow. with a full like capacity stadium people chanting my name wow yeah with a picture and like that must have been pretty oh cool oh my right? god gives me goosebump you have like a little tear coming down from you <laughs> <laughs> you were just like don't, don't film me <laughs> don't film me yeah but like yeah like yeah. having those people all like literally a full a football you, yeah, yeah full football stadium chanting my name was crazy and now the pressure's up right because now they're gonna yeah and they have high expectations yeah but, but you feel like you got it right i mean like i'm more comfortable i'm more aware of myself and more aware of my capability and moving here just uh introduced me to uh, like some new environment with very good people around mm. me i have very good coaching happening right now uh that like they set my my mind in a in a good direction so that's why the training part i'm not worried about anymore so mm. they got me they 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 set up everything uh I shout out to him sean sully like he really cares about from tk me. mma from tk yeah shout out tk and them and yeah. Those guys. yeah so like he, they, he really cares and he really wanna like take this journey with me uh to grow in the sport and uh yeah i feel comfortable with the training so i can look in different stuff different i now i grew into commentary mm. so i start coming i was gonna bring that up yeah let me do the job all right, no, all right. Take it over from me so you started getting into commentating <laughs> how's that going for you yeah so where did that come into uh is it arabic or english that you're doing i do the arabic one okay, nice. don't they need an english one uh -huh. don't they need an english guy <laughs> no so like what happened was uh i i wanted to do be part of fighting uh okay. or any fighting event whether i'm fighting or not mm. so i was like how about me joining the commentary booth and just being the fighter behind the ma mic just mm. sharing with people what i think is happening in the fight and what i think that fighter should do to win 
Just the the, the Arab Kumi, really. Yeah, right exactly. Yeah. The Arabic Kumi. And uh, I started with uh, UAE Warriors. I pitched the idea to like my brother Fuad. Mm. Shout out to him. And uh, he's like, yeah, let's try. They like the first one, first event. I did only four fights. The, I think they were worried yeah, if yeah. I'm gonna fuck it up yeah. or not. But yeah, they liked it. I did a second event, full one, then a third, fourth, and then uh, the UFC commentators Muhammad Al Husseini mm. uh, pitched the idea to me if I join the booth with them, and it's like, let's try. Why not? Yeah. Three events, and then yeah. Um, how does that, what do you feel is the difference between? Because obviously your goals are set on the UFC, right? Yes. What would you say, apart from money, is... Well, I'm going to answer my own question. It's about quality of fighters, right? Competition, yes. Yeah. yeah. Do you feel like there's a lot more to still do in the Arab world with the, with the Arab fighters and them there, growing? I feel there is no more Arabic fighters for me to, to fight. Mm. Like, at my weight class, there's no more. I... Uh, even now we're struggling to find an arabic fighter to fight me at my weight it's yeah. either we are really good friends either we are assigned to different promotions yeah or like they're not at the same level hmm. so i can't you can't just bring me an 84 kilo guys that has two fights in his record is like yeah. hey fight this guy yeah I was like, you're like, I got a for? belt now. <laughs> you got yeah. to up the game. I yeah. have an upper hand yeah, in, yeah. in any fight. Yeah. So like, why would you give me a fighter that is a two and one to fight me? Mm. I have 21 fights in my record. Yeah. So like, yeah, it's hard now. So yeah, I mean, one win or like on the international level and hopefully we aim big. And then in the UFC, you're going, uh, do you see yourself winning a championship in the UFC? I hope so. I mean, yeah. you should, like, otherwise there's no point of going, right? Exactly. Yeah. This is what I wanted, that, like the dream. The dream is I had four goals or five goals in my life, become a black belt, world champion, become a UFC, beat the UFC champion. And I've done two now, yeah. and I still two have two to, to go. Who is your, if you would say now, if you could choose to roll with anyone, past or present, that you haven't rolled with, who would you be your ideal roll with i rolled with pretty a lot of people like really top level greg jones luke's i just posted uh, my role with lucas there, yeah. pound for pound number one jiu-jitsu guy in the world yeah. i roll with josh hanger i would love to roll with uh andre galval and i'd love to roll with habib Nurmagomedov. i heard he has mm. such an incredible jiu-jitsu and oh uh, who else oh uh, george st pierre mm, that's an interesting one yeah that's a very interesting one now do you agree with khabib's views on sambo v jiu jitsu on i don't think he meant it i i, I recently he wore a t-shirt with giant yeah, yeah, yeah. giant letter saying if I, sambo was easy it would be called jiu jitsu <laughs> i um I disagree with him because yeah. I trained with a lot of Sambo guys and uh, it's easy to win them mm. in Jiu-Jitsu. If you're good in Jiu-Jitsu, there is an easy way to win them in Jiu-Jitsu because mm. uh, like mainly they 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 open up everything for you mm. and they chase leg locks and stuff like that. But I, I saw a video like recently about that incident, him wearing a T-shirt, mm. like if Samba was easy called Jiu-Jitsu. He said a friend of his mm. gave him a T-shirt at the last minute and he only saw what was written on it in the videos of the, of the weigh-in. Ah, that's a nice yeah. way to get out of it. Well done, Khalid. Yeah. But okay, so, so a lot of people say that the weakness of Jiu-Jitsu, it's getting to the ground. Do you agree with that or not? The they weakness that, of jiu-jitsu yeah. is getting the fight to the ground. Yeah, getting yes. the fight to the ground. Yeah, I agree big time. It's, and I see it really obvious here in UAE. Mm. Like not, not a lot of uh, jiu-jitsu schools rely on uh, takedowns, takedowns right? and wrestling. Mm. They rely on pulling guard. Yeah, I noticed then, that as well. Yeah, then, then flipping the fight and trying to. So you already for me, getting on my back is already losing. Yeah, because I remember that when I first started and they were just starting, you know, from guard, half guard and full guard and side guard and all that. And I was like, 
but what about yeah like i'm not gonna get into a fight and go just one second mate yes all right just come in here mate yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not, do you know what i mean yes exactly like so is that so, that initial yeah so kind for of me take for down me has is, to be, yeah, yeah for me like yeah the i i noticed that uh especially fighting no uh gi yeah. they always like yeah, grab yeah. the lapel grab the sleeve sit down yeah, and pull guard yeah, yeah, yeah. pull guard yeah. it's like no it's not meant to be like that so they took the aggr uh, aggressiveness part out of it mm. yeah one thing when you were a black belt in jiu-jitsu this might be a stupid question are you also not a black belt in no gi does that make any sense with the question i'm asking uh, if you become a let's just say i become a black belt in in jiu-jitsu with a gi <laughs> what does that make me in no gi jiu-jitsu black belt no gi jiu-jitsu really yes but it's a very different style it's not it's different approach so i have a special uh theory about it or approach it's very important to be to wear the gi in the beginning mm. of your jiu-jitsu to slow everything down to understand the movement the mechanics behind yeah it. however moving on into your jiu-jitsu journey you have to move to no gi why because when you're in the gi you rely a lot on grips mm. and it's like hold this hold that However, in Nogi, you rely a lot on using your body mm. to control your opponent without your hands. Mm. So I'm controlling you with only my body weight. So imagine after being so good in that, you add grips to me and like where I can hold. Mm. So I'm not only controlling you with my body weight, I'm also controlling you with the grips you gave me with wearing the gi. So it's important and it, they go like parallel to each other. You mm. can't do one without the other and the, we just grow with it. Of course, it's different and different energy system. Mm. But uh, yeah, they are so close. You, you're good in no gi, you're good in gi. Just the grips. For example, I haven't done no, uh, sorry, I haven't done gi for a while. My fingers may tear in the mm. beginning of getting back in the gi, but I get really good at mm. it and so quick. I just need to get my grips, uh, get used to the material mm. and and just... It's like that with everything. Like when you stop playing guitar for a while and then you go back into the guitar, you have just exactly. literally lines in, in your hands. 100%. I think it's really important, the no gi, because... <coughs> because of the real life application too it depends why you, why you're training obviously yeah but i mean we don't live in japan so we're not walking around with gis and kimonos and these kind of things so anyway so now we call it sport jujitsu when mm. you wear a gi you call it sport jujitsu so you are actually doing it as a sport mm. but no gi is fighting that's when fighting. the real application yeah. comes in because you're going to be fighting someone who yeah. is going to be wearing exactly a, a t-shirt unless you're fighting a lebanese guy who's sure to be wearing a big white <laughs> shirt with giant <laughs> collars and giant cuffs rolled up like that <laughs> so you could get right into it you can find these yeah. people in uh, blue jeans white loafers and a white shirt <laughs> lebanon <laughs> exactly so how does your wife feel about me fighting? fighting yeah uh she was i don't know you gotta ask her well you, you want to call her and ask her uh, <laughs> get her, get her on the phone. like dude nah. how do you feel about the fighting <laughs> so i told I, you stop calling me on the show this is embarrassing <laughs> so yeah i mean like she's she's nervous of course and every fight but she's really supportive yeah so like uh she's supporting me with everything she could and uh like when I'm dieting, she diet, cooks the diet for me. Mm. Uh, she's she sees where I'm heading. She sees uh, uh, my ambition and my goals, and she's very supportive of that. But it's very nerve wracking, and uh, she can't be at home when mm. I'm fighting. She has to be with me in the arena. Nice. Yeah. Because some women are the, they're like, look, I'm not coming to the fight. Yeah, you know, I don't want to see it. I don't want to be a part of it. She's kind of like, thing. it's harder for her to, to, not, be, know, to yeah. not be there. Yeah, because she wants to know what's happening after the fight, before the fight. What's if I feel good, if I'm not. So she she always has the word coming to her. Yeah. Like my friends, my corner, my, like they tell her, I'm good. He's good. He's ready. Yeah. He's not ready. I, I finished a fight. How was he? He's good. No injuries. She walks to me after the fight. So, yeah. yeah. Have you ever had one of those Adria moments yet? Where she walks into the ring, you're like, Adria, no. <laughs> cool. I love you. Believe, before we get, before we getting uh, married, I got beat up in yeah. a fight 
And it was like, I was trying to impress her. It was like, come watch me yeah, fighting. Yeah. And it was like, I got beat up bad. Yeah. I was like, oh, shit. But she's supposed to Arab. She would throw her shahada. Yeah. Like, get, <laughs> get off him. Get off him. You know? It was like, I was <laughs> fighting one of really, uh, like, legends in jiu-jitsu. Rustam Shasiyev yeah. is like, he beat who's who's in jiu-jitsu. And uh, he is very hairy person. Mm. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I was like the... between corners, like yeah, yeah, exactly. I was like the, <laughs> his body, hair, yeah. yeah. And he's like, yeah, yeah. she was yelling at him yeah. because of his body. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I never know, bro. Where's he from? Uh, Russia. There you go, no, Dagestan. They've probably been genetically modified just I, for a skill to be fighting. You know? I know, right? So they're just like, we're just gonna give you the drink this, and the hair just goes. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be to your advantage. Don't worry. Probably. <laughs> no, Dagestanis, bro, they're a different breed, bro. They are, when it comes to fight, this is, and this is the thing with the whole McGregor Khabib thing. Anyone else, you can get away with saying that stuff well, too. Well, they are beatable. They, they're, not, they, they're not like no, I beat. No, Dagestan. it's not about no. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the way they're raised, you know very kind of like strict very into yes. their kind of religion yeah. very into their no no messing around yeah and that sh like shit talking and 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 stuff he them. took it too far because yes. it's like you you insulting insulting him insulting you know choose an english fighter yeah. or american fighter they don't take it personally they're I like oh yeah you're chatting shit but when you say it to a to a you know one of these people they're just like no 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 we don't play that shit bro yeah which is why I didn't, I wasn't... They don't know how yeah, to. They exactly. just know how to fight. Exactly. Like, which is like, why when they jumped over and all that yeah, stuff, I was like, normal, what would you expect, bro? Yeah. <laughs> like, you don't mess around with people's religions and, and, and all that stuff, bro. I think he was in a dark place in his head. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he was full of, full, like, full of himself and, mm. and uh, just took it to another level. Mm. Like, uh, then now we see him in a different... In, yeah, the daddy. and the, the, Yeah, and respectful, but it doesn't work. A lot of people him. don't like it doesn't work for, it's not him he's yeah. acting yeah it's so like stop the act be yourself yeah talk trash people will hate you people will love you you change the sport mm. he changed the MMA. No, no, he did bro he did he changed the payday he changed the mma he changed the industry mm. there is i always say it before the mcgregor era yeah. after the mcgregor era yeah how is mma changed yeah so. but man i would love to do that i mean you're a black but i chat shit all the time you're a black belt in jiu-jitsu. I'm a black belt yeah. in chat shit too, bro. I can chat <laughs> shit. I can chat. Oh I, my! I, I, I want to be high, bro. You just created a sport. <laughs> exactly I right. Chat shit too, bro. I want to be. I love like, that. I want to create a thing where I now love it. there will be some money in it, bro. So now a fighter hires a guy who comes with him. And he's like the, their chat shih tzu guy. And he, chat during in, in the in the press conferences, the fighter doesn't say anything, and then they fight each other. The chat shih tzu guys. <laughs> <laughs> they have the the I out the ring fight and I then the fighters the have word. the in the ring fight. I love the tone you know? of it. Chat right? Chit Tzu. Chat Chit Tzu, Man, bro. I had one guy, I don't know, Stephen Kennedy. Yeah. He was doing all these kind of moves and chanting yeah. shit to me and like in the press conference getting in my face and yeah. trying to slap me. And I was like, I just didn't know what to say. I'm not comfortable with yeah. Shit chatting. That's when you should have hired me, bro. I and I would have come at you. Ring a bell, bro. This nah. is what happens. Okay, so this is what happens. We get a bell, right? You ring the bell like the Undertaker, and then I come out. The, <laughs> I come running to the ring like a wrestler, and then I slide in under the under the table, and I come up from behind. And I'm like, what? The? And then I can do all your chat shit see for you, bro. Man, see, bro, this, this is a business because we can also give belts depending on how good your chat shit suit is, bro. Oh my, we can start selling it and stuff. Yeah, just created Courses, a whole different league, with masterclass, sport, chat shit suit, right? Promotions, this is yeah, new business, promotions, competitions. Bro. Let's start it, bro. We there's, gotta there's, do um, it. We gotta do it. Uh, what was I gonna say? How would you feel about your kids fighting professionally? If I have kids, something you're gonna, if I have yeah. kids, first they will do whatever they want, mm. however they must learn martial arts mm. especially if i have a girl mm. like she's gonna be a savage mm. and like i think before she walks i will taking her to the gym making her watch jujitsu mm. she has to be a black belt at yeah. 18 years old it's a long time bro and she's, she's no good at jujitsu or what bro no but there is uh 18 there is, years bro <laughs> yes you can't you don't start grading from age one two yeah, three you yeah, start right. Eight, right, grading from some people have up. got their their black belts quick right four or five years three but, years bj pen yeah but like they have because it takes a long time yeah i it took me eight years yeah i but they, they must have a background in some in sort something of, else uh, right yeah because this is the one thing i love about jujitsu it's not like karate bro 
karate and you come to your third lesson and they're like congratulations yes. you're a blue belt yeah right you're like, i know i still don't know any cutters or anything the, there's no meaning behind bro, it you can be a white belt and be a beast bro compared to the normal public yes like if you take a white belt who's just before changing belts and you just get a guy a normal guy who doesn't do any martial arts that white belt is a He's a monster compared to that guy, bro. True. Like, a monster. This is the, like the importance of black belt in jiu-jitsu. It's yeah. not like any other black belt. No, you're not like a judo black belt. Mm. You're not like karate black belt. You're, it's different because of the importance of grading system. Yeah. The grading system is so good that make it made it so like so hard to get a black belt. Keep going, keep going, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so like b from white to blue to purple is really long time yeah so i stay i stayed in my blue belt six years wow yeah what were so. you doing all that time oh yeah getting fat that's what you were saying right you were just messing around eating mcdonald's <laughs> no i didn't no, no, start yeah. i didn't no, start yeah. it's, it's a long process bro and, yeah. and it, it changes people a lot yeah i remember i remember when i first started doing jujitsu even after the you third session jiu yeah yeah i'm not I'm not anywhere near your belts, bro. The problem with me... What belt are you? I'm, not, I'm still a white belt. Okay. But I'm a beast of a white belt, bro. The uh, problem, that's why the you problem. kept saying a white belt just no, before no, no, changing belt. No, 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 I'll tell you why I haven't I, changed belts. One, we got a roll. Let's roll. What, we finished? <laughs> <laughs> One, because I'm a bit of a gym whore. Yeah? And I, yeah, I never stick to something long enough. So I'll train in one place for, you know couple of you know four months or whatever and then yeah. i'll go to another place and i'll just be like hi I'm a, I'm a white belt let's roll teach me something and then i'll go to another place like, i never developed the passion to just stay in one place and stick it out and this is a problem that i've had since i've been young i'm very good at picking things up very quickly yeah and then i pick them up and then i'm like i'm gonna try something else now what, i mean i never had that or different different gym? sport ah, and okay. stuff so i don't have that sticking power to just stay right till the end which is a bad thing but at the same time, that's why I'm, I can do so many things well. <laughs> like, yeah, do you know what I mean? That's, that's why they that say level. there's only 2% of people who join Jiu-Jitsu that yeah. state till they become black belts. Yeah. Only Tell 2%. Me. Tell me. 2%? Um, yeah. Oh, I thought you said two persons. I was about to say, all right, let's 2%. go. Let's, let's hear it. <laughs> one of them is a master of his own body and soul. The <laughs> no. other one is a dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> no, only 2%. Yeah, yeah. But imagine i mean like it's so jujitsu for yeah. me is so dominant it yeah. gives you this uh extra and like uh satisfaction yeah. when you are uh, like kind of 80 percent or mm. like you can control anybody on yeah, the floor yeah. and they can't like they will they will see them mm. drowning they yeah, you, yeah. you'll you'll see the look in their face that they're giving up before yeah, you yeah. even attempt yeah. to submit them but this, so. yeah, this is the thing that I'm saying. Like, I remember going to, so when I, I went to a place in uh, Fit Republic and there was these guys who were, who were doing it so much longer than me. Yeah. And it was just like, every time we were rolling, I was just like, just shaming them. And I could see how frustrated they were getting, you know, just by that. And they were like, oh, why don't you? Why don't you stop lying? You've been doing it longer. And I was just like, no, you're being so obvious with what you do. You don't practice things on both sides. I know you're going to shrimp to that side because you obviously haven't practiced any left side of your body stuff. Yeah. Everything you do is so telegraphed and you're doing it again. Like we literally started rolling again and you're doing the same thing again. Like there's no diversity to what they're trying to do, bro. So this is what happens when you're in the beginning of your journey in jiu-jitsu. When you are later on, like... In, yeah, I always say you start enjoying jujitsu yeah. when you are purple yeah. brown belt. You start really, really enjoying it, yeah. really playing with the techniques yeah. because you be become able to apply every technique you learn throughout the years and you're comfortable while applying them and they, you're comfortable with the transition between moves. Yeah, between so, one and the other. Yeah, yeah so you're, you're putting, like my style is, is different than oh i get a pass i get a position mm. no i will let you pass but i'll submit you wherever you are yeah yeah so i'm always chasing submission i'm i'm comfortable between transitions from submission triangle leg lock like i will probably 
get you in a triangle. I'm not sure if I'm going to get it. Yeah. I'll drop into your leg. I'm going to switch it to take you back. And I'm going to go for an arm bar. Yeah. I'll just, I'm really chill with, yeah, yeah. with the motion. And it becomes not tiring. It becomes mm. a, um, a flow. Yeah. And that's the most important thing that I noticed in the beginning. My first session, when the guy got on top of me, I was so just like, <laughs> Yeah. And like trying and being so stiff and whatever and then i just started noticing i started looking at the teachers bro and i was like this guy's gonna fall asleep yeah exactly. he's just like <laughs> and he's breathing so slow and i'm like yeah. <laughs> sweating on his forehead bro there's sweat <laughs> falling off my face onto him and it's only yeah. been about 15 seconds bro <laughs> and i'm giving it everything i got and then 20 seconds in i'm just dead bro i'm just like i can't do that exactly. and he's just like okay now you roll over <laughs> let me just finish you <laughs> off do you know what i mean and it made me just realize how just the small amount of technique bro and 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 just relaxation exactly can change everything in, and in a fight understanding your body because mm. when you understand your body you understand what you the capability of yeah. your body how what your body is like comfortable of doing like some stuff that i can show you your mm. body won't will reject it mm. then you will modify it to suit you to suit, yeah yeah and i will tell you i can show you how to do an arm bar but yeah. not everyone will do the same uh, move, exact move. That's why I say jujitsu is like an identity. Yeah. You're like an, any ID card. It's so yeah. different. Because yeah. your jujitsu is like a finger a fingerprint. Yeah. Your jujitsu will never ever be like my jujitsu. Yeah. My jujitsu will never ever be like anybody's. Yeah. I will me uh, we may have similarities, Similarity, yeah. but we will never be the same. Yeah. But this, yeah, this is the thing with martial arts as well. It's like, I did capoeira for a long time. Yeah, whatever. All right. Shh, shh. He's just, all right, wait. He's just showing off. No, no, wait, wait, his, wait. Let me like tell you the point. White no, but before, before, up on before you start saying capoeira is not a martial art. Yeah. All <laughs> it right. is a martial right. art. Right. It is. No, the thing I like about it is that in capoeira, everybody has a name. And the names and you usually say it right. Uh, capoeira. Yeah, fala Portuguese, porra. Oh, yeah. porra. So, um, in capoeira, everybody's named after an animal. Or okay. something similar to that. Yeah. So you have a Brazilian name, and that's usually based on your character. Okay. So I was called Papagaio, and Papagaio means parrot. That's because yeah. I talk so much shit, well, bro, well, and because I, I can repeat things really quickly. So Papagaio? if I see, yeah, if well, I can well, see something, are. exactly. If I see yeah. something, I can repeat it quickly because I, I remember it quickly. Yeah. So like different people, like if someone's big and hairy, he'll be called a bear, or do you know what I mean? Well, and depending on their called? styles. Uh, I don't know, bro. We'll have to give you a name, bro. Yeah. Do you? Can I hold your belt? Is it? Is it, is there like rules in this? Is it, <laughs> I'm relaxed now, bro. I've been doing verbal jujitsu with you for ages, bro. I'm chilled. Is, <laughs> it, is, is there a thing like? Is it? Is it a respect thing? Can you hold people's belts? Yes, or you stuff? can. You can, right? Yeah. It's not like a. No, no you like can't. Disrespectful. Can. No. So there's two ways yeah. of becoming a champion. One, blood, sweat, and tears. <laughs> two, being friends with one and just yeah. stealing his belt. <laughs> Do you have a? Uh, a name a, 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 a fight because fighters usually have names nickname no 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 oh you ruined my joke i was gonna yeah. say it doesn't matter what your <laughs> name is you bro <laughs> you see i yeah, even right? beat you in your jokes <laughs> right you you've just moved up to blue belt in chat shih tzu <laughs> and here is your belt and i would like to <laughs> i would like to give the, are they real um, diamonds and rubies uh, i don't think so otherwise i won't let you touch yeah it. right that yeah. would be pretty but what about the um because I heard some of the boxing ones are actually the real. UFC ones, they have rubies in them. Do you need a corner, man? So, <laughs> so the UFC uh, belt, there is a, a part that you can remove the piece of it. And put on a chain. Is, <laughs> no, <laughs> chain. And there is a ruby for every defense. No way. So they take the crystal thingy and send it closer to this and they put a real uh, ruby. Oh, and then they put a real one in there yeah and then every time you win they give you a new belt you give them that piece of the belt and they add a ruby oh that's pretty sick bro we're getting yeah. into the diamond business here right. and stuff they, are, they have now the ufc have a diamond uh partner well big star okay called. you are in let's uh i'm dana white okay let me just shave. <laughs> let me just shave my head and say really random things that make no sense okay <laughs> Welcome to the uh, <laughs> welcome to the UFC. <laughs> who would you like to be your first fight? Who would I like to? No, be? I'm speaking American. That's why I don't understand. Oh, that. I'm Dana okay. White. So ah, okay. So Habibi, hella hella at the UFC. Hel uh, hel uh, he learned a bit of Arabic when he was here and sure. promoting the Khabib yeah. fights. Uh, who would you like? Use your choice now. Who's your first fight? I w 
Any, and, and I'm saying anyone, you can go straight to a title fight if you feel no, like you're ready. Israel Adesanya is a friend of mine, so okay, yeah. But I w- I wanted my first fight to be against Chris Weidman before his injury. The karma but, behind that, bro. Oh my god, it's that is so exact bad. karma, right? Oh, so the bad. same thing happened with the silver. Yeah, and the he, the same thing happened to him. That's I know, bad, right? Oh. All right, he's when out. I was picture. commentating on that event, and what happened? Were you there? Yeah, no, not in oh, okay. the actual oh, event. Okay. The event was in yeah. the states, uh, but I was in the studios commentating on the yeah. uh, on the event, and uh, it happened. I was like, Ooh. I don't like seeing that shit, bro. I don't like like. Don't get me wrong. I can be on a battlefield, and people could have bullet wounds all over them. But when I see that flopping, <laughs> <laughs> man, oh I can't God. deal with that, oh. bro. Oh. I can't deal with that terrible man terrible but yeah because it's not just the break the break is one thing it's when the foot goes the, back to the floor right? to try and balance oh, again yes. and then it goes ha yeah. <laughs> like that it just messes it's up it's crazy right oh mm. touch wood touch wood nothing like that ever happens to you or yeah. me in your corner doing chat shit super okay so who will it be then yeah uh, I don't know stuff Rob, listen, I just flew you over from Dubai. You're costing me money. I gave you a contract. If you don't fight today, it's gonna be pick someone. Okay, who uh what's his name? I forgot. See, that's the disrespect. Oh, Robert. The disrespect that he Robert. has for you guys. He doesn't care who you he doesn't even care what your name yeah, is, bruv. Just exactly. jump in the ring and let's do this. Exactly. No, but I would love to fight one of the top guys like uh Robert Whitaker. Mm-hmm. Is a good name. He's yeah. really good, really good fighter. Yeah, uh, I would love to find him. Um, Kevin Holland. Okay. I thought you were saying Je- Kevin Hart there for a second as well. No, it's an easy fight. Kev- right? Kevin Holland because yeah. he he talks too much and mm-hmm. he talks to he chit chat too too much. So it's more of a fight for me then, isn't it? <laughs> No, but well, I actually step in the cage and fight. I'll step yeah. in the cage. I might run around for a bit, bro. But, mm. bro, you, you know what? I'll say this right now. With no level of training, no professional fights. Okay. For some of those purses, I don't care who you are. I'll step in. But you can't get to those purses without... Yeah, and you live in my imaginary world for a second oh of what I'm saying. It's too imaginary. Okay, no, but what I'm saying is... Can, but what I'm saying is, if someone said to me right now, choose the... If they said, okay, listen... Get in the ring with Nganu tomorrow. He's going to fight you like a real fight tomorrow. No prep, nothing. And we'll give you $50 million. Are you mad? I'd be like, let's sign the contract, bro. This is the case with anyone. No, I don't think so. You think so? $50 million. I'd do it for a million. Things are pretty bad after Corona, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Times are hard, okay. bro. <laughs> I think he'll do it for 20k. 20k? Yeah, oh, but it's gonna cost more than twenty k to fix my face. Oh, no, bro. but the guess what? When you sign a contract with the UFC, they're responsible to fix you with any, anything that happens to you inside 20K, the case. Twenty k, twenty k, what pounds? Yeah, okay, fifty k against Ngannou, bro. Fifty, a hundred k, hundred k. How much is that in dirhams? See, I've got twins. Like and school fees are expensive, bro. Um, man. So yeah, I think for a hundred k, I would, bro. Yeah. But, and they will fix anything that happens to you. My nose has been broken like eight times. But the bro. thing is, one kick probably will shatter your knee. No, but there's going to be rules, right? R- rules? Yeah. yeah. There's hey. going to be, no, no, but I mean, like, there's going to be, a, a, I'm going to get some red paint and I'll paint one part of my body. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the only yeah. place this he's allowed to punch your kick. This bro. is too imaginary. Now. And then you I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it like there and I'm going to be like, this is for punches, all right? And this, <laughs> this bit is for kicks, right? So I'm going to try and get out of his range, bro. Oh. And just... You yeah. will be shocked how range... I don't know. I think I, have, I think I have more of a career in chess, to be honest. I know. So if you want to promote that with me, I'm 100% down to start this business. I'll get you. Um, uh, once I, I know my next opponent, if he's a, a chit chatter. Yeah. I will do it like, We should yeah. start a new logo It should be triangle shaped It's like <laughs> tri- uh, my, my logo is triangle shaped There the you way. go bro That's exactly what I was getting at bro Tarek Suleiman Jiu Jitsu That's it It's so triangle it, Have you opened a school? Not yet You're going to? Uh, one of my projects Would yeah. you like me to be your protege And we can do It could be oh. like one of those movies bro Come, come, I'll come, come in. Come to TK first, and then we can put that music on in the burning. Uh, with your <laughs> montage. <laughs> come, come to TK. Look. But Tam's been telling me to come oh, to TK no. for ages, bro. Huh? But Tam's been telling me to. Come. He made me a membership, and I still haven't gone, bro. Why? I don't know, bro. But now I'm, I'm there. Just, you, yeah, now I have to go, bro. Yeah. Do you know what it is? 
and now I know where you are. So I, I need I to take my life back, bro. After this corona, it really messed me up, bro. In a sense of my priorities change. Like, first of all, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a very very big family man. So yeah, my twins are three years old, and my wife is not three years old. She's old. But I, I really <laughs> like spending time with my family. So okay. any second I get that's not in the gym, just training. I just like being home, bro, or doing this kind of thing. So, okay. and it wasn't like that before. Before, I'd be like, which is what I was saying, Jim. I have memberships in all of the gyms, Fly High, Fit Republic, and all that stuff. Yeah. So I'd go and do something there, or I'd go and do something there. I need to find one place, one teacher, one guy, and really, because I do want to get into it, bro. And then Corona started, and it was like, wow. all right, Corona's happening. I'm not going to be have somebody's lips on my neck, <laughs> you know, breathing down my neck while yeah. while this stuff. And that yeah. was in the beginning. Why I didn't get the vaccine now? I'm not getting the vaccine. Are you mad, bro? Why? The, the thing has been tested, bro. They're putting, you don't even know what they're putting into no, you, bro. The Chinese one is good. Well, so you've taken it, right? No. Don't take it, bro. Why? Because there's hundreds so the of Chinese, thousands of cases of people that are dying, the, blind. Like The Chinese one blood is just clots. dead virus. It's just like the old method. Of Who says, it. bruv? I don't know. This okay, the, where's, your, where's your... Where's your where's, tell me what's in it. I don't know. There you go. And this is the problem. So many people are going, no, but they said it's okay. Okay, I'm going to take it. No, no bro. I'm going to take it just so I can travel. No, bro. I will row you there on a boat. Just like <laughs> <laughs> By the time you get to your first UFC fight, they're like, this guy is 82 years old, bro. <laughs> Who's he going to fight? No, no, it's like this stuff uh, has to be tested, bro. It needs like five, six, seven years of tests before well, you can know the results. Ha- like, did you see that? Like, there's some, some things are like things that going around on the internet saying that not the unvaccinated people will be like restricted of movement. okay you know who i'll be have you seen wolf of wall street no okay so leonardo dicaprio film you might have seen the meme. oh yeah, yeah okay sorry, uh, that's yeah. me on the mic i'm not leaving i'm not, <laughs> I'm not leaving <laughs> <laughs> i don't care bro well i live in a country where there's beach sand everything i want that's it's all right mama i love you but i'm not coming to london again bro <laughs> i need proof bro i need time i need this Anytime that there's this many, you really like that belt, right? Yeah. He's right. just like, <laughs> struck it. Like, he's just like, if you were not a dickhead and a champion, you could be doing this too. <laughs> but you're a peasant. <laughs> the fighting skills of a chicken. <laughs> no, yeah. No, I'm, I'm happy to stay. I'm getting really uncomfortable because you, <laughs> the, the relationship between you and your belt is getting very sexual. <laughs> no, yeah. So now, where do you go from here? Um, <laughs> not from the studio. I mean, uh, <laughs> I mean, in your career, fighting. Like I, I, I feel what we're one fight away from yeah. big things. Yeah. And then, do you move or do you stay here? What do you mean move? If you, if you sign to the UFC, do you? No, move? I'll stay here. Stay here. Like I, most of my career, I was outside of here, outside of the Arabic region, and mm. however, the plan was always. Like I planted a seed and I was like working outside to develop my skills and sharpen my my martial arts. And I, the plan was always to come back and share what I learned, share my experiences. And uh, like I already like grew my name and grew my reputation as like one of the pioneers of MMA. And mm. it's but it's time for me to come and uh, yeah, harvest my hard work. Nice. Yeah. What what could you if you were to give some advice? No, actually, yeah, let me go back. What's that meal that you go to after a fight? Meal? Mm. Do you oh, have one thing that's just like knafe. after the fight, the I same have, thing? I always crave knafe because I go into a harsh diet yeah. where I like barely eat any sugar, and I love knafe. Knafe is my favorite, favorite, favorite meal. Meal, so, I call it meal because I eat it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Dude, after the same seeing, day, I don't after, care. After seeing the way you were striking that belt, I can see I could see you just having knafe straight on the belt. Just my, like wife, <laughs> my wife brings me three three kilos of knafe every time I finish no a fight. Way. I come back, like literally. Uh, I finished last time I finished the fight. I went back to the hotel. It was like one a.m. She found knafe for me. Wow. It didn't taste great, but I still ate it. But then. Like the next day I got the made up for it. Day. Yeah. You see that guys, the sayings are all wrong. Behind every successful, powerful man is a wife finding Knefer at yeah. two in the morning. I know, bro. right? I know. Yeah, she's I a always, keeper, bro. Always, she's a keeper. I always look to where you're looking yeah. and I forget that I that, have that's my your, own that's your yes, camera. That. I always look have up. you been spending the whole time looking at my camera? Because <laughs> the editing no, is gonna I be actually, really bad for I'm it. looking to the one in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, what yeah. advice would you give to young fighters? Um 
in the region and out the region who who want to follow in your footsteps and really push themselves to the new limit it's a, it's a it's a really hard road to uh like uh to commit to uh my advice to them is just uh stick it up just keep training your opportunity will come uh compete 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 and uh learn from the ones that ahead of you uh i'm always happy to help everyone i receive tons of messages every day about all oh, help like get me into a fight get me a fight <laughs> but you see i look here first <laughs> i was like this yeah. guy this guy yeah but like uh yeah this is what my message to them and uh yeah pay like for them just like more fighters should be paying back to the community like helping other fighters or kids i just started uh like my campaign is like uh fighting bullying mm. like teaching people teaching kids to stand up for themselves number one to stand up for other kids that who are getting bullied and like ask for help speak up so the the fighters should pay back to the community help kids get awareness about fighting grow their popularity hmm. become well known and then promotion will pay attention and then they will get them under the wing and get fights and grow here's an awkward situation have you ever been in this situation or if you haven't yet how would you say it in this situation if you have a friend or a fighter who's just not good enough but it's their dream and they're pushing it but you know inside they're never going to get there do you step in and do you say, look, mate, maybe it's time that you started commentating or something else? Or do you just let them follow their dream and that's and, and support them through it? It's a tough question. It's just it's hard to crush somebody's dream. It's hard. However, when I started doing commentary was also part of my mission to show that fighters can do more than just fighting. Mm. Like uh, I wanted to grow and uh, like shed the light on fighter, not just fighting because I'm still in my fighting career. I'm still considerably young or like mm. midway in my fighting age. So like I wanted the, to show that the fighters are not just fighters. You can, especially for the promotions or for the companies that you can capitalize on your fighters man like you can use them utilize them in the community in mm. other jobs like uh now like for example also what i'm doing is going around speak up uh, around schools and speak to kids and uh, introduce them to healthy lives and introduce them to uh like the, the fi fighting bullying and stuff mm. uh just utilize your fighters and different things is like there is uh there isn't so many events happening for the region mm -hmm. or like uh, on the smaller scale uh so you can't keep the fighters busy so the fighters have to look to find different sorts of income so using these fighters in these directions could be helpful especially for fighters that mm -hmm. won't make it do you have you been in that situation where you've had a friend or you I have few around me that, in my opinion, think that they should uh, like hang it's it cool and idea. yeah, and uh, but I can't say it. Is that because they're not close enough, or is it because because I don't know if you saw so um, Brendan Shaw and Joe Rogan, yeah, Joe Rogan's you must know who Joe Rogan is, yeah. right? So when Brendan Shaw was on his podcast, they yeah. had a thing where he kind of told him, "Look, dude, I don't want to see you getting hurt," and I was really brave, and it was really kind of it's hard to tell somebody who's yeah a in the in the, uh, and Shob was already a fighter in the in the ufc yeah so it's a hard pill to swallow it is it is and especially now you here you can't say it i don't think you can say it because the competition is not hard enough mm. for that for the low level so you can always find a like a fair match whatever the skill you you mm. have you can always find a fair match but like when in the case of Brendan Chubb and uh, being in the UFC, there is no easy fight. Mm. You know what I mean? There is no, especially also in the heavyweight. Yeah. There is no easy punch. Mm. The shittiest punch is that weighs maybe 40 yeah, yeah. kilograms. Yeah, yeah. So like, yeah, it's different, different situation, different cases, different fights. You can't just like 
include everyone in the same in the same uh, block. <clears throat> so you wouldn't do it then. It depend again. It depends on the situation. Okay, I'm I'm your best friend, and we're in this together. This is that warrior movie. Um, <laughs> would you tell me? You just want to. Like, no, I just want. No, no, you know? I just want to know if if okay. Let's just say the scenario. Okay. We're, we're best friends. We've okay. been doing this together. We started at twelve years old together. I'm getting my face smashed in every fight, but I'm still like, I can do it, man. If I just knuckle down, I'll, I'll become nah, champion. I'll, Would you I'll just be probably, like, yeah, I'll tell you, I'll sit you down and I'll, I was like, hey, let's, let's search different ways of mm. uh, making a living. I will, I will probably tell you just how about you just help me in my fight camps yeah. and I'll pay <laughs> you percentage. Yeah. Like, let's start there. And then I'll, I'll push him. I won't, maybe in the beginning, I won't say it um, like directly. I will just, try to lead yeah, yeah. you to it Slowly, it's like yeah. just help me just do this yeah. and if you don't get it i'll just dude yeah literally, you've been losing for a long time so i gave you a lot of chances yeah. and i think it's about time to just, just stop it yeah do something else yeah. maybe stay in the sport just do something else what would have you done what if you weren't a fighter what job would you have done if not, if I was uh, probably something in uh, agriculture because I graduated from uh, AUB with uh, agribusiness. So, and I, I was supposed to work in the uh, agriculture industry. Well, yeah. And what would be what would be a job that you'd enjoy doing, if you had? I if, enjoy doing. If you if you could, couldn't be a fighter, and it's not sports related, and just be like, okay, I can see myself just doing this and enjoying it and carrying on I with don't it. Know. It's hard, right? It's hard. Yeah. Because I enjoy, I I, yeah. I love him. Man. I don't hate my job. And also, every time someone in the office said something, you'd be like, "I just want to punch you in your face." Right? Bro. <laughs> just like so I get, I get paid to, <laughs> yeah, exactly, to punch right? people. So yeah. yeah, bro, it's been an absolute pleasure having you here, man. And hopefully, the next um, time th that we have this conversation, you've won another belt. Um, and then hopefully after that, you go to the UFC. So, I hope so. also for your career, but mainly so I can have one <laughs> of these. I can have one of these belts in the studio. There's a space for it right there. Um, right. No, but you know, there's a thank there's you for a having great me. road well, ahead of you, and you're, you're, you're doing pleasure. a lot of good things, and you're light, you. lighting up the country and and representing. And Syria is proud of you, and I'm proud of you. And um, thank you, thank you. Can I have that belt on? No, <laughs> no there is no, no amount of talk. Okay, but we're gonna we're gonna well, roll, right? I'm gonna come down, and you're gonna you're gonna make me stick to it, right? Hundred percent. You're gonna make me stick to it. I will just. Pin your arm to that. No, no, I don't mat. mean like make me stick to the canvas, bro. I mean make me stick to it and keep coming, so I'm uh, closer to that two percent. Uh, you will tell. You'll send me your address, yeah. and every time you don't show up, I'll go to your house, yeah. beat you to yeah. near death. Yeah, but not, not in front of my kids, though, bro. No, they need no, to no. respect me, bro. We'll, we'll go to a private. <laughs> I'll be like, Noah, go back over there. They're gonna be like. Shut up, man. That guy comes and beats you up every day, bro. I'm not listening to yeah, what you're we'll saying. Go, we'll go yeah, in yeah. a private room, beat okay. you up, tell it. Why didn't you show up? You'll show up next day. I'm and down. every time you miss it, I'll find your place. I'm down. Beat you up. Tell I'm you, down. Show up to the class. And we see. I'm in. Boom. Cool. Bro, thank you so much. My man. Anything else that you that you want to say? Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Shout out to UAE Warriors. Shout out to Fuad Darwish. For, uh, shout out to Tam Khan, Sean Sully, and all the guys working around me. And uh, uh, like big things happening, uh, yeah. either in my campaign, fight bullying. It just we start in you with my dear friend Dalia. Uh, it's a really cool uh, like idea just very similar to anti-bullying mm -hmm. but we wanted to shed the light more on it through jujitsu teaching kids that you don't only stand up for yourself but stand up for others if they're getting bullied just help them speak up for them if they're shy and we know mm -hmm. that a lot of kids that uh, get bullied they don't speak up mm -hmm. they they shy up they hide it because they are sh they feel shameful shame and they don't want to show it mm -hmm. just uh, we're teaching the kids that you gotta speak up go mm -hmm. tell the teacher tell the parents let them help that kid and uh, stand up against the bully, like mm -hmm. teaching them this, uh, the skills that they become confident enough, uh, enough about themselves to stand up against the bullies. And uh, yeah, uh, follow me with my MMA journey. Yeah, and we're gonna every time links. you watch UFC, watch it in Arabic. That's it. You're not allowed to watch it in English I'm done, anymore. Bro. I'm done. I'm There's no more <laughs> call me. The, the real call me is over. That's I'm it. taking over. I'm the. Arabic the real, that's it. Yeah. I'm gonna put all the links for everything in your 
yes. in your thingies. Awesome. Um, and I think, yeah, it's really important to work with the kids as well because even having kids, like I couldn't imagine my kids being bullied and not yeah. telling me because exactly. I, I even told my wife, I said, babe, if I find out that my kids are being bullied, I'm literally going to go up to the parents. I know. And I'm going to say to the dad, I'm going to be like, listen, I'm giving you two days to talk to your kid. If not, I'm going to come and smash your face in every day in front of him, bro. Definitely. Take that to your bloody house, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. <laughs>